What's up, guys, and welcome back to Chemical Guys Live, day two. Jen, what did we see yesterday? So yesterday was super exciting. If you guys did a tune in, you missed out on an amazing live for our first time ever. So we had this head to head. You guys kind of saw a little preview before this. And I had to film Joey because Team Joey unfortunately lost. And it felt really bad, but. Condolences <laughs> to Team Joey, unfortunately. He's back there, he got foamed. But what you guys didn't see after on camera, Henry was a good sport. He ended up getting foamed too. They foamed together. So we'll show you guys those previews later on. If you're following us on Instagram, Facebook, you'll see it. Uh, but we're so happy that you guys are back here today. We have a lot of fun stuff planned. You guys had so many questions yesterday that we realized like we want to answer these for you. And we do this all the time on YouTube, but why not do it live? Uh, so Jason, tell them what we're doing. Yeah, basically today we're going to run through for all you newbies out there that have never detailed before, we had a lot of questions yesterday after the live um, because Henry was using a lot of the hydro products, the ceramic products. And a lot of people out there think that you need to be a professional to, right. to be able to use these things. But it's, we make it so easy here at Couple Guys to get that ceramic coating, that hydrophobic protection. Um, so we're going to show, a, basically, we it I think we've, we've taught pretty much everyone in Los Angeles and all of you guys already like how we to do this. So, <laughs> so we had to travel all the way to the East Coast. We brought some noob in from Boston yep. um, and we're gonna bring him on camera right now. Yeah. This is Snook, everybody. How's it going? Hi. <laughs> and so we're gonna teach Snook today how to detail his BMW. Um, and yeah, we got the expertise of Henry and we've got Nick as well today. So stay tuned and for everybody watching, if you, Stay till the end and watch. We've got some freebies for you today. We've got some special access later on, so stick with us. And as always, put your questions down below. Say hello. Where are you coming from? Are you coming from Boston too? I hope so. <laughs> I wanted to add. No, so one fun thing about this is yesterday we did half of the car, right? And so it was Joey on one half and Henry on the other. So today we wanted to show you a true before and after because we're gonna go through that whole process. We're gonna go from washing, we're gonna go clay. There's all the steps that we're gonna to try to do in our one hour with you. So we are doing half of the car. That's right. So I'm gonna preface that because I think that's pretty funny that we're gonna to get to see half of the fun. car and we're gonna get Henry to show every step and then you're gonna have Nick and everyone else. And not to mention you get a true 50-50 of yeah. what the, what a dirty car looks like versus a completely treated and protected car. Yes, so and ask us these questions so that we can answer them for you while we are going along. It's not just for the newbies. There was a lot of questions also, mm -hmm. um, like Jason mentioned, on ceramics and on you know every step in between. We'll try to answer as many as we can, uh, if not on live, also in the comments. Absolutely, oh, yeah. so let's get, let's get started here. All right. So, Snook. I'm excited. Uh, yes, let's do this. Uh, what, tell us a little bit about your detailing expertise. Um, I'm not really sure what detailing means. <laughs> for a cop, for a cop, I'm not okay. really sure. Like, I don't know, like, I can give you detailed description. And How do you car, wash your car? A car, for you guys that a are car. listening that are not from Boston, is a car. A car, so a car. You're yeah, going to get a lot of that. Yeah. It's really fun, though. It you might want to really put good. subtitles on the we'll bottom. We'll put little subtitles on the so bottom. So you understand, yeah. So in this instance, mm -hmm. um, I'm, if you were going to start, like, a detail or start a, a wash, like, what would you do? Uh, I would first get the hose from, like, <laughs> You know, your garden <laughs> from my garden, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just get the garden hose, just spray it, you know, like just get it all wet. Then okay. after that, you um, you put some soap and water in, you clean it, then you spray it again with some water, and then you wax it because I'm not an anti waxer. Okay, so, cool. all right, so, I, so nice. you're on the right path. But yeah. step number one, would you start on the body of the car? Would you start on your wheels? Would you start on the undercarriage? What's your guess? When you first start? Yeah, when you first start. Oh, I, just, do, I just, do it all. all. All at once. All at once. All at once. Go. It's like one go, yeah. All right, so today we're going to show you how to do it properly. As you guys can see, okay. down below we already have a full arsenal down here. Yeah. I'm going to go over exactly what all these products do. I'll do it myself, and then I have an, another arsenal back there that, that will allow you to do it by yourself. Oh, so I'm going to, okay. All right. Yeah, so yeah. to start off with, the dirtiest part of the vehicle is always going to be the wheels. For sure. So the wheels go through it all. They go through road tar. They, go, they might go over paint. They might go through grime, debris. It all splatters all over your car. So that's where we'll start off on the wheels. We always want to get the dirtiest part out first, and then mm -hmm. that's when we want to the body. Just imagine you start on the body, then you come back to your wheels. You're going to be splattering all this dirt, grime, debris back onto your car. Uh, you're going to be working double, right? That makes Absolutely. sense. Yeah, yeah, I figured it would go from the gravity, gravity. to top up here and then go down, <laughs> and the wheels would be the last pot. That's what I usually do. Most times, you actually are right. You would do top to bottom, but in this particular case, you do want to start with the wheels first because okay. there is, you'll see there's some splatter. And actually, if we can get a camera to get in close to this and show you guys how dirty this wheel actually is. <laughs> this thing um, is filthy. Just, I'm going to awesome. grab my finger. I mean, so, I, <laughs> I'm going to grab my finger. 
just check out how dirty that that wheel is. That wheel, all of that is just brake dust. And did you know, fun fact, brake dust over time can cause corrosion on your wheels. It can diminish them. And unfortunately, if you do not clean them as often, the wheel finish is completely gone. Oh, that's not good. So this is why we need yeah. you to clean your wheels as often and clean them thoroughly so that the barrel of the wheel, the face of the wheel, the lug nuts does not get damaged over time. Okay. So that's step true. number one is yep. going to be rinse. Jason, can you pass me the hose right there? Absolutely. Oh, there we All go. All right. So step number one, mm -hmm. we're just going to rinse it down just to knock off any loose yeah. grime and debris. So let me actually run over and turn on the water first. Oh, All yeah, right? yeah, so yeah eat that. I mean, on. LA's in a drought, so maybe it's probably best. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're trying to conserve a little bit. But we, actually, in that regard, we do have waterless washes as well. So oh. if you don't have access to a garden hose or you don't have uh, access to a pressure washer or anything, you could use like a Mr. Sprayer with an Eco Smart. Of course. And do a waterless wash. No, but, that's smart because I have an apartment. I don't have a hose like ready for me to like spray. Like I was going to ask you, I'm like, usually do to go to the like self car wash myself and yeah. spray. Yeah. Well, you use a brush? Well, whatever they give you. Don't yeah. use that. <laughs> why? I'll show you why today. Okay. Yeah. Let's get right into it. So we're going to start off by rinsing it off. All right. And by rinsing it off, we just knock down the loose grime and debris. Don't be scared. Come on, come close. All right. I'm so, like a cat. I don't want to get wet. <laughs> All right. So we already knocked down the loose grime and debris. Yep. We're gonna let that dwell for a while, and now we're gonna start off with our brushes, our dirt trap. Do you know what a dirt trap is? It's all in the name. It traps dirt. It traps all right. Dirt, yeah. So I have an assortment of brushes. This is a dirt trap. It has over a hundred cyclonic cones that's going to filter your water while you wash. So we recommend using this whenever you wash your car okay. and whenever you wash your wheels because wheels are abrasive. It's just all iron particles sitting. So how do you use it? Insert at an angle. You'll push it all the way down to the bottom. And this is just water? This is just pure water. Okay. All right. Just water. And then we have an assortment of brushes. Okay. I'll just throw them in here. And whenever oh. we get to use them, I'll go over them exactly where we're, what bad. brushes were. Yeah. So now, okay. the wheel cleaner we'll be using today is Diablo Wheel Gel. So oh. Diablo Wheel Gel basically simplifies wheel cleaning 100%. If you don't know what type of wheels you have, matte, aluminum, powder coated, chrome, Diablo wheel gel can clean any type of wheel. So it's universal. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to get our Diablo wheel gel. Yep. We're going to add one ounce. You know what? Let's make it two. Just like so it be extra foamy. Two ounces of so Diablo wheel gel. How do you know it's an ounce? Is it a second? It's all in, it's all in the uh, it's all click in the, the It's all in the squeeze. Is that what it is? Yes. All right. So two ounces. Now we're going to activate our studs. Yep. And just check out these premium studs right here. Oh, nice. Touch them. Can I touch them? They're super lubricated. And it smells, it smells great, right? good. It smells, it smells like, like bubblegum, right? Bubblegum toothpaste. When you were a kid, ever have that stuff? <laughs> it with smells that amazing. Wash? But don't drink this. No. Of course, don't, don't drink it. <laughs> and right here we have a secondary sprayer bottle that has a ducky sprayer. And okay. this ducky sprayer, all it's going to do, it's going to aerate Diablo wheel gel. So whenever I spray onto the wheel, it foams up. So this basically acts as like a kind of a foaming agent. So um, you can okay. use the product and, and the foam will emulsify and lift the dirt off of the surface. Oh, so I'm being nice. extra with this wheel cleaner. Like, I'm getting it everywhere dirty. because I, when was the last time you cleaned these wheels? <laughs> Two weeks ago, <laughs> <laughs> but I did a bad job. I can see. All right, so we'll start off with FBD, Face Barrel Detail. That's a okay. cool acronym that Jason and I came up with, I like Face Barrel Detail. So we're going to start with the face. Mm -hmm. We're going to go in here. We're going to get our wheelie brush. Our wheelie brush actually has flag tip bristles, okay. so it's very super, it's super soft. So whenever it goes to the wheel, it's yep. going to contour to the area. And it's not going to damage them. Okay. And all you need to do is just clean the face back and forth. So the wheelie brush has synthetic bristles. That's right. going to pull off any dirt, grime, debris. And nice. once you're done, come back in here, mm -hmm. bring it out. The dirt trap's causing a touch at the bottom. If you want extra lubrication, a quick pro tip, spray some onto your brush, go back to the area you're cleaning, and just okay. clean it up again. All right, nice. so now we got the face done, right? Mm -hmm. Next is the barrel. The barrel is going to be done with the Red Rocket. But before anything, guys, what kind of wheel cleaner do you guys use that are, is part of the Chemical Guys line? Yeah, Double put it down in the comments. Signature Series, what's your favorite, dog? Put it down in the comments, guys. Let us know. Oh, my favorite? Yeah, your favorite. Oh, what's your gosh. I like <laughs> Sticky Citrus. Sticky Citrus? I'm a Diablo yeah, guy. Yeah, All right, so now we got the face done. It's mm -hmm. time to go into the barrel. The okay. barrel is going to be used with the Red Rocket. The Red Rocket is bendable. It's flexible. It has nylon bristles. Okay. And we always recommend starting at the top, and then you'll work oh. your way down. Okay. Notice all the oh. dirt that's coming out on here. It so. looks like a popsicle, but it's not a popsicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just all dirt. So come back in here. Yep. Damn, it, gets, it goes in there. It gets, it gets deep, in right? There. Like that brush I get, don't go in there. Like. <laughs> Do you have any questions so far, Snook? Like, uh, yeah, I've basically been doing this wrong, and I feel like an idiot. It's all right. Everybody starts somewhere, right? I, I started with this as well, and I definitely... Uh, See, this makes sense because I didn't know how to get in there, and I have like big hands, 
So for me to get in there, it's kind of hot. So previously, you were trying to just use your hands with like what, like a, a sponge? A sponge. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> it's. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, here at Chemical Guys, we definitely have- We simplify cleaning, Yeah, we basically. simplify it, we make it easy to do. It's way easier to stick the red rocket in there than, than a sponge. Yeah, another pro tip for you, always yeah. start from top to bottom. So yeah. I start off at the top spoke, yep. now I'm making my way around. Like mm -hmm. this, you don't go against gravity, you don't clean your wheel twice. Right. So just go back in there constantly and clean mm -hmm. it. And if you look at the water, look how dirty this water actually is. So many suds, it's hot. Uh, now you can no, see. No, look, it looks yeah. brown. All of that is just brake design that is sitting on your face of the wheel. All right, so now we got the face, we got the barrel. Mm -hmm. Next, now it's time to get into detail. So I'm going to respray down the wheel gel. Okay. Just so I can be extra generous with the wheel. You got it. And now it's time to scrub out the details, like the lug nuts, the valve stem. And that brush is going to be the boar's hair detailing brush. Nice. So this boar's hair detailing brush, okay. you go to the lug nuts to clean them. It'll just simply clean up deeply. Yep. And then, or into, into the details where the other brushes did not fit. Okay. You go back in there, just clean it up. And it's all in the details. So whenever you clean a detail, you go to a car show, a lot of car enthusiasts check out the barrel of your wheel, check out the face wheel, how well does it take care of it. Yeah. Uh, so we always recommend cleaning your wheels thoroughly mm -hmm. and making sure you get everything. And finally, just to clean up the tire, because if we do Some come more. out to apply a, dress, a tire dressing, you like your yep. tires very dressed, right? What was that? You like your tires super shiny? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we need to clean up the, whatever tire shine you used to have on here, using the big blue stiffy. Yep. So we're gonna start scrubbing it. Okay. And you can see nice. Diablo wheel gel foams up, mm -hmm. and Diablo wheel gel does it all. It yeah. cleaned my, it cleaned your tires, it cleaned the face of the wheel, and it cleaned up the face of it and the barrel as well. So now we'll get water. Okay. I'll just rinse it off. And your wheel is now clean, and then now it's truly black. Damn. But now it's time to put you into the test. Yeah. All right. So now we have your RC. Oh, I'm doing it over here? Wheel. All yeah. right. And I feel like an artist with all these like brushes and stuff, like a renaissance man over here. So yeah, you're going to have to... Uh, so I'm doing this? Yeah. So you're going to have to start from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, um, while you do that, I'm going to run in the back real quick and grab some questions. All right. All right. So enter that. To put all the sponges in here. Yeah, you can just throw all your brushes in there. Just throw all your brushes in there. Oh, It'll be super easy, yeah. So I guess you have a lot of brushes to play with. Okay. Uh, I'll actually sit on this side. So I'll, I'll guide you. All right. all right, so two ounces. Like two squeeze? Yeah, two squeeze. One, two. All right. So now it's time to f activate your stuff. So just get the water. Yep. Activate. Yeah, just put it in. Before anything, it's just mix it. Oh, you're gonna mix it? Properly mix. Yeah, yeah because you, you put it on the brush. Yeah, look at that. I messed up. Uh, it's okay. Just spray directly onto the water. I'm a virgin. There you go. You got some suds. All right, so now you're gonna just rinse down the face of the wheel and the tire. All right, we're gonna get right into cleaning. So start off by spraying Diablo wheel gel that's in the secondary spray bottle. This one right here? Yes, right there. Yep. Just spray it all over. Just get it all Diabloed up. Yeah. Be very generous with it, guys, because Diablo wheel gel is going to be cleaning up iron particles, <laughs> brake dust. Uh, just spray directly on it, get it everywhere. All right, we're gonna get right into clean. So we're gonna start off with right. the FBD. So face is going to be the green wheelie brush. Green one, yes. Yes. So get your suds. Yep. Dip them in there. Now you can go to the face of face of the wheel and just like this, right here. So we're gonna. Oh yeah. So like, the face <laughs> is going to be just only the, right here. the Don't rim get itself. The tire. Yeah, just, so just, just the rim. Just the rim. Oh right, right, right. Not the tire, right? The tire. Not here the tire. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just the rim. Just, just the rim. Just the rim. So just the face. All right. If you need to go back. Sink your, sink your brush back into the bucket. Yep. All the way down, you can scrub at the bottom of the dirt trap. Bring it back up, that scrub sucks. your face to your wheel again. And as you guys can see right now, Snook is actually cleaning the face to wheel and it's very easy to do the FBD face barrel detail. You get all the details done and you get your wheels cleaned very thoroughly. All right, so Snook, how are we looking? Yep, it's good. All right, so now it's time to go FBD. So barrel. That's, be, yeah, no. red rocket. The red rocket, here we go. Yeah. And this is the, you just stuff that right in there. Yeah, look how easy it is, right? All right, you could bring it back out, especially because your wheels are dirty. Yeah, they're dirty. But I actually like how it gets like the, the router in there and everything. It gets everything. You know what I mean? It just gets, it's not messing around, which is really good. All right, let's come back to your bucket and yep. sink it in there to get all the brake dust out. All right, let's go back to the area. You are down there on that spoke right there, yeah. Look, I'm getting a wash too. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's come back one more time. Yep. And then remember, you don't want to go against gravity. You want to start from the top to oh, bottom. Top so you start at this spoke. Yep. Now it's time to come right here. Yeah, this one. All right. 
All right, so guys, you got some questions coming this in here. Good. Uh, somebody wants to know the ratio of diluting Diablo. So we always recommend diluting Diablo three to one ratio. Uh, the cool thing about Camel Guys bottles, if you're not good at diluting, we actually supply dilution ratios directly on our bottle. So what you would want to do, fill up Diablo wheel gel to a three to one, and the rest water. Awesome. Simple as that. Cool. And then somebody else wanted to know what the difference between the Diablo wheel gel and the sprayable is. So the sprayable Diablo wheel gel is ready to use. So you can just get it out, throw the sprayer on, and just start spraying. If you're good with dilution, that's when we recommend going with the concentrator version, which has the spout. Awesome. And what kind of wheels can we use this on? You can use it on all type of wheels. Matte, aluminum, chrome, powder coated, customized wheels. Any type of wheel, Diablo Wheel Joe has your back. Perfect. All right. Ooh, so thanks for your questions, guys. So keep them coming. I'll spray spray so it can be very generous. Yep. So we got the face, we got the barrel. Now it's time to get into the details. So find the Boris Hair detailing brush in there. That's the blue one, right? No, that's nope, the little. Lot. Oh, this is a little uh, paintbrush. So right. we'll spray some on here. Spray some on it. All right. All right. I'll go to your lug nuts. Yeah. Nice. Clean this is it. how you get these little things. Now, do you, you need a special brush for this. I can't go to like Michael's and buy a paintbrush and use so it. So the Boris Hair Detailing Brush, whenever you press it down, it actually, it's flagged. So if you look closely, it flags. So it contours the tight areas. Uh. So whenever you clean it, and the Boris Hair Brush are stiff enough to pull off all the grime, dirt, and debris. And the Boris Hair Detailing Brush not only works on wheels, you can also use it on your interior, clean your dashboard, oh, nice. clean your leather, okay. clean vinyl. So it's universal. It's, it's uh, universal, universal, but just make sure to designate Wheel brush with wheel brushes, interior brush with interior brushes, so you could avoid yeah. cross contaminate. Yeah, you don't want to cross contaminate. Yeah. You don't want to put all that tire grease and dirt on your dash or anything like that. All right, so now it's time for the tire. So we will spray the tire, mm -hmm. and now it's the big blue stick. The big one, yeah, here we go. And for you guys watching at home or watching us wherever you guys might be watching us, if you do have low profile tires, we do supply different types of brushes. If you have very low, thin profile tires, we recommend using the nifty brush. If you have regular size tires, that's when you can use this big blue stick. You can see yeah, how's it looking? It, you can see the dirt coming off. It's like yeah. brown. So all of that is just yeah. road tar, your old previous dressing you had. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to rinse down the right. wheel. Perfect. Get this baby wet. So Henry, people want to ask, um, are you supposed to wash the tires first, then the wheels, or the wheels and the tires? How I like to keep it very simple, tires last. Tires, tires, tires last. last, yeah. So even though dirt, grime, debris falls back all over, mm -hmm. it's going to be very easy to rinse it off. So look, we cleaned the tire last, the wheel's still clean. So just say tires for last. FBD, then tires. FBD, guys. Nice. Then the tires. FBDT. All right. So Snook, we got your wheels Good. clean. Yeah. Now it's time to move on. Part number two. Can All you right. guess it? Can I what? Can you guess part number two? What's next to wash? The car. All right. <laughs> we, got, we got a live one here, guys. I hope All right. so. All right, we can just leave this right here. So, of course. Now we're going to be moving on to our next section, which is going to be over here. Red and blue bucket. Now, do you know why we have two buckets? It's probably like wash and rinse. Is it like a restaurant? Pretty much, yeah. You're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like that. So we want to avoid uh, getting any dirt and grime that's currently on the car which you can see there's a lot of like bird poop and all kinds of there's fallout no stuff on here no um when you're wiping the car down you know that stuff gets stuck in your wash bin and if you're right. gonna, gonna go straight back into your wash water or your uh soapy water you're yeah. just putting all that dirt in there um regardless of having a dirt trap in there that will collect a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. You want to filter it even more so we have one bucket that's designated simply just for wash water it's just clean water with a dirt trap in there. You're gonna bring your wash mitt back here, rub that on the trap. The dirt will come down below the, it'll get sucked down below in the cyclone dirt trap. Oh, and then okay. you can rinse that out and grab fresh soap every single time Got you. from that bucket. So oh. go ahead, why don't, why don't Put those. Uh, you go ahead and do all this stuff, Snook. So we already entered the dirt traps. Dirt yep. traps, yep. Now it's time to go what soap we're gonna be using today. And today, we're gonna be treating your BMW with Hydro Suds. Hydro Suds. So Hydro nice. Suds, mm -hmm. the ceramic infused soap. So you're gonna be getting protection, you're gonna be getting a wash, all in one easy step. Nice. That's right, and we're showing okay. you guys Hydro Suds today because um, this would actually be used mostly as a maintenance wash in this instance because we are ceramic coating his entire car today. Um, so you would use this after you're done ceramic coating to boost your ceramic protection. Even if you don't have any ceramic on your car, you can still use this to get a little bit of ceramic uh, properties on your paint. Um, in, the, in a normal situation, we probably want to strip everything off to begin with, but since we don't have a lot of time today on the live, we're just going to show you how awesome Hydro Suds is on this car as well. All right, so what All do right. I just do? 
two so, things again? So first no. of all, we're going to designate our buckets. How, right. how Jason said, we're going to have a rinse bucket and a wash bucket. So blue is going to be our rinse, red is going to be our wash. So cool. insert two ounces inside here. Two good squirts. Two good squirts. Oh, yeah, you do that. One. Whoa. Two. All right. Nice. All right. And now it's time to set up our foam can. Do you know what a foam cannon is? A can that has foam coming out of it. Oh. <laughs> do you know what it connects to? Garden hose, pressure washer? Uh, probably a garden hose. All Who right. Has a, You're wrong. Has a, it's what? actually a pressure washer. Yeah. Okay. So you need a foam can to work with a pressure washer. Uh, right. It works with both electric and gas pressure washer. Uh, okay. The minimum PSI level is 800, and the minimum gallons per minute is 1.6. Okay. But if you do not have a pressure washer, guys, you could also use a foam blaster that connects to your regular garden hose, so you can still foam your car oh, you and have a foam party yeah. anyway. And as okay. you guys saw, if you tune into live yesterday, we used both a pressure washer and a garden hose. Sean, doing this? I'll undo it. You can pour the soap. Go ahead. I'll put so the soap in here. Pour yeah. two ounces in there. So enter two All ounces. Right, so. One, two good squeezes. Two. Here you go. I'll re cap I noticed this isn't as uh, jelly as the other one. Everybody says that, but it foams up amazing. Oh, yeah. I wasn't talking about foam. He, he I know it's of the oh, Diablo. Oh, like the yeah. Diablo. Yeah, like the Diablo. Yeah, yeah, this is a gel based formula. Uh, and this is more. And this, yeah, this is ceramic. So all we're doing right now is stirring it. We're not mm -hmm. going to be shaking it because if I do shake it, I'll cause foam inside here. And we want no foam in here. Okay. We want all the foam on the car. So it's like a martini. Yes. All right. All right. So now we're all set up. And finally, yep. the wash mitt we're going to be using today is going to be the Chanel wash mitt. The Chanel wash mitt is a microfiber wash mitt that you can okay. stick your hand in here and it won't fall off. It has an elastic band. So if you're very clumsy, it won't fall out. <laughs> yeah. So now we'll just sink this inside our wash yep. bucket. We'll activate the suds over here on this. And we're All gonna right. turn on the pressure washer, connect the, the hose, and you're just gonna go for it, okay? Just go. Try Ow. to stay on this side of the tape so okay. we don't we don't get uh, we can show people a true 50 50. Yeah, so so we're gonna start off by rinsing it down first just so we can okay. knock off any loose grime and debris. So that's why I put the pressure washer tip, and then after that we're gonna be using the big mouth max release foam can to suds up the whole entire car and we get to washing, right? Sweet. Exactly. So it's time to turn on the pressure washer. All right. Alright, so we're gonna suds this up real quick. Okay. Oh! And you're gonna rinse the car. Right, I'm gonna rinse yeah. it with this. Stand over yeah. here. Alright. <laughs> uh, try to stay All on right. this side of the table All if right. you can. So we'll be good. Just a nice quick rinse to remove any loose dirt, grime, and debris. Obviously, as he's rinsing, you're also rinsing off the residue that's on the wheels as well. So that's why you start with the wheels first. Perfect. Good All right. And we're going to attach the big mouth naturally foam cannon to the pressure washer. All right. And foam away. It's good. Yes, yeah, good to go. Do I hold it like this? No, no. You can just you can hold it if you want, but it's ready to go. Click the trigger. What? Click it. Oh, All right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's fun and exciting, guys. There you go. Especially if you're new at this. I feel like I'm like. Whoa! Even the experts can agree. Foaming right. is probably the best ready? part of the Let's go. We love foaming cars. So. Oh no. Who do you guys have pressure washers and cannons at home? Go. Make sure you tag us on your post on Foam Fridays, and we'll repost it. Your uh, foaming videos and stories to our story. Nice. Look at this thick foam that he's sludging up on this car. It looks awesome. You can see Hydro says, like, just foams up like crazy. You could also get the wheels, too, if you want. Wheels, too? Yeah. Hydro says is safe for your wheels as well, so. All right, now we have a white car. Nice. Perfect. As we this kill the pressure a, washer. This is intense. You like it? I like it. It's fun, it's fun I would right? I do everyone's car like all over the place. <laughs> all right. So now that's the beauty of this the... too is you could. So once you guys have these skills under your belt, if you're newbies, I mean, many of you guys watching have started you your own that. detailing business from these tutorials, which is amazing. We love that. We love hearing your I success like stories. Uh, so definitely share those down below. But how many of you guys have actually started as a well, noob and now have your own detailing business? You Put that this? in the comments below. Yeah. Okay, so you can save it because I didn't use that much. So it's nice here for like another time, like another if I yeah, next I mean, week. So yeah. I'm not wasting it. No, yeah, you could use it. Cool. You, you could resave it. Just remove the head whenever you're done. Yep. Run pure water through it. Snap it back on. 
and then you can yeah. go. Yeah. Nice, I like that. So you always want to clean fun. your tools and make sure that everything yeah. is uh, now snug. It's time to wash your car. Here's your washer. Oh, I gotta wash my car. All right. I'll put this one on. Get your washer right here. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna get all the suds all right. into our Chanel wash mitt. We're gonna go to the highest point of the vehicle. So you go to your roof. I'll yep. see after your hood. And we're gonna be working in linear motions. So never go in circles. So oh. just go straight lines. Oh, straight lines. Okay. Yeah. So see, everyone... I always do circles. I thought it was like a tooth. And and yeah. what you know, there's a specific movie we won't mention that basically has people doing oh, no. uh, certain waxing motions, and that's where yeah. a lot of people get their detailing information. After two from. to three passes, come back to your rinse bucket. Okay. Release all the filth from your wash mitt. Take it right out. Mm -hmm. Bring it out, inspect it, make sure your wash mitt is clean, and then that's when you proceed on the whole entire vehicle. Okay. So especially because your car is dark and yeah. you see a lot of imperfections in it especially dark colored cars, yeah. you want to take the extra caution to avoid scratches and swirls. So go to the area, one pass, or even a pro tip, yep. flip your wash mitt to the other side and give it a secondary pass, oh, and then go okay. to your rinse bucket, wring it out, and proceed. Does it matter if I go like north to south, want... or can I go like north, then I, can I go back this back way and too? Forth. Back and forth, okay. Yeah. But you always want to start from the top to bottom, because your undercarriage is also going to be the most dirtiest part of your vehicle, and you don't okay. want to bring that back up to your paint. And you do the windows. You can do your glass, too, yeah, you can do your chrome, your oh. mirrors, everything. Okay. But your wheels are already clean, so this saves you time. You don't have to go back with your wash mitt, cross contamination. Because. So just do the paint, just avoid the wheels. All right. Exactly. Exactly. What do you think so far, Snook? I'm upset I can't do the other side. <laughs> <laughs> You're sad. We'll do the other side after the live. No, we just no. don't have time for it. But it looks good. This is easy. I didn't know that. About, I was doing circular motion. I thought that was how you were supposed to yeah, do it. Yeah, a little wax on, wax off, but that is not the case. So you, de you guys, like Henry was saying, um, in the event you do pick up some dirt and debris or rock chips or anything like that, you, uh, polishing out a straight line is way easier than polishing out a swirl mark, and that's how you get those swirl marks is debris, foreign debris in your mitt or anything that you're rubbing onto your vehicle. All right, so I, got a lot, I love how you just scrub the bottom of it and just show the viewers how oh, dirty yeah. your undercarriage is. So just imagine <laughs> you <laughs> take that back up yeah. onto your paint and you start rubbing it, you're going to be scratching it, right? Uh, okay. So just sink it in here. That's what I usually do. I just do one brush and just do the whole car. Yeah. yeah. And, and if it's black, it's, it's black or whatever. And, and we can tell, no offense, but there's, there's definitely a lot <laughs> of scratches on this car. So, so look, we got the whole half of the car. <laughs> so much for having a nice BMW, right? Right. We yes. got half of the car. Yep. It's completely done. Now it's time to rinse it off. Oh, all right, don't yeah, worry. Yeah. We're still going to take care of your other half. No, no, I don't. I don't just got it. All right, so you get your press, you get the press pressure washer, washer. snubby. Yeah, we're all set up for you. All right. Oof. Come on, muscles. <laughs> Start from top to bottom. And as Snook rinses down this vehicle, he's doing it from the top to the bottom, uh, saving himself some work later on. If you start at the bottom, you'll end up with a lot of foam and stuff still on the top of the vehicle. Which is, you're adding a lot of extra work for yourself. And I don't know if you guys pressure wash with a large blonde or not, but we also have the Torx Snubby, which is a low profile. It helps you get a little closer, and it's easier to use the cannon. So, yeah. You can already start to see a beautiful difference. All the bird poop on the hood is gone. Uh, all the dirt and debris that was on here is gone. And once you're done washing, it'll give right, you a so good again, idea of take what from you help you need give to do. Give a quick rinse. Now that it's clean, we can inspect the paint for what it truly is underneath the dirt, and basically take it from there. You never really know what you're going to get, so it's always kind of uh, fly by the seat of your pants kind of thing. Awesome. Great, and so now that we're done with this, we gotta move on to the drying process. Uh, so we're gonna grab some towels real quick and show you how that's done. Okay. And looks pretty good from my angle here. Right. We Just definitely did not stay on the tape line, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but hopefully oh, we can still see a huge difference at the end here. Well, these are nice. Soft, right? 
Yeah. So these are our woolly mammoth towels. Um, we actually just recently came out with a robe uh, made out of the same soft, silky soft microfiber material. And it's getting cold now. So I mean, now's the time to pick up your robes, guys, if you haven't <laughs> yet. They're super comfortable. I love mine and I wear it every day. I mean, I would clean my car in it. Yeah, like, you could clean yeah, your car you know in what robe. I mean? so, so is there a secret? At, yeah, Henry, tell them how to. Uh, so there's different ways you could use it. So as you can see, I have mine folded up. Mm -hmm. but. Jason has a perfect uh, wet surface over there, so all he's doing is going to he's going to lay it on the surface, okay. he's patting it out, making sure all the fibers pick up the water, and then he could either drag it off or peel it off, and then like that, your car turns dry. And you can right. see you don't really have protection on this because it seems to be dragging a little bit, and that happens when you don't have a ceramic coating on here. Uh, so okay. if this was actually coated, which it will be soon after this, you'll see this will clean up like instantly, like all the water will come off onto this towel. Oh, okay. Um, but you can also fold it. You can do all kinds of different maneuvers if you want, especially one uh, big newbie mistake, which I don't want you to do right now, is when you get down, because I've done this before, is when you get down here and you have the towel huge, you, there's yeah. a chance that you can drag it on the floor and you'll pick up some kind of stuff there and put it back yeah. on your car. So we do recommend when you get down to the bottom to fold it up a little bit, just make it a little easier to handle. And then that way you can actually go across the, the parts of the car that are closer to the edge of the ground. All right, okay. so, like, so we gave you the techniques. Yep. You, we, I did my half, he's doing his half, I got the through the middle. Half. All right. All right, so let's do this. Throw it on there, you could either go in linear motions and just check it out, dry. You yeah, go to the next is. portion. Good. It's easy too, it's, it's super pretty easy. So the woolly mammoth can actually hold up to a gallon of water. You can feel it getting, a, not a little heavy, but you can feel the, it picking up the water. Yeah. Absorption, right? Absor yeah, yeah, you can. That's cool that you don't have to do it again. Now I'm putting <laughs> fingerprints all over it. I need to wear gloves or a bodysuit <laughs> or a hazmat suit for me. Hazmat suit. So how easy was it to wash your car? Now that we give you the I mean, pro with all tip. these tools and everything, and those tips, super easy. Super easy. I mean, but now I... we have something better for you. We have, we're gonna be moving on to our next step. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Jason, yeah, I'm going to be fielding some questions from you guys right now. Uh, all the questions that you've been asking, we're going to take a little Q&A break. As we move this car into the garage here, uh, we're going to meet up with Nick, and we're going to go over claying and polishing, I think. This probably needs a good little polish, so we'll do some polishing, and then we're going to apply the ceramic. So stick with us for a bit, and we do have that special gift for you at the end if you stay all the way through, so definitely stay with us for this. So. Why don't you guys go ahead and move the car in and I'll uh, All right. grab some Perfect. questions here. Let's do this. All right, so you get inside your car. I'll move everything for you. So guys, definitely put your questions in below. I did your little newbie thing. I dropped it on the ground. Oh, if you drop it on the ground. And Nick's going to come out here and help us with these we as well. We won't use that one, yeah. Perfect. So. You guys remember Nick? It's good. What's going on, man? We're gonna come over this way. So, Nick, people want to know why we go in straight lines with the wash mitt. A That's little bit more question. in depth about that. Yeah. So, linear motions, like we were mentioning before, is the best way to prevent any kind of swirling action. Because, say you pick up a rock or a stick or something abrasive. As you make that swirling motion, it's going to dig in really deep, especially as it's making that path, and that's really hard to polish out, and it's also very noticeable. So by working in linear motions, that prevents the installation of swirls, and it's also a lot easier to polish out a straight line scratch. Absolutely. What do you guys think so far? Should we do more of these lives? Are you, you enjoying it? Let us know in the comments below, for sure. Looks like you guys are having a lot of fun out here. We are having a lot of fun, Nick. We're, did you see anything while we were doing this that you might like, I don't know, suggest a different technique or or how, how was the noob doing so far? I think you guys are teaching them well. I mean, it all starts from the top and you guys are doing a great job so far, giving them the right techniques as well as the right way to, you know, go about the whole process of detailing. That's right. Just move some buckets out of the way here. So you've gotten questions, right? So somebody asked uh, how often to you wash your vehicle. Yeah. How often do you wash your car? Ooh. Well, that's a tough one. I try to do it at least once a week, um, but in the event that I can't, I do love that we have quick detailers as well. So right, yeah. the beauty of those products is that if you wash your car and it stays pretty fresh, um, 
you only get like a light layer of dust on it, you can maintain that clean for a longer period of time between washes without having to do this whole full wash every single week. Exactly. But if you did have a, a routine of washing your vehicle weekly or bi-weekly, whatever it may be, you know, it's perfectly fine to wash your vehicle as often as desired. Oh, yeah. Just, you can wash it as much as you like. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. yeah, you can't really wash the paint off of your vehicle, right, but it's important right. that you know you keep your car looking its best. So cleaning it routinely, maybe once a month at the very least, just to uh, make sure water spots, bird droppings, things like that don't etch the surface, and also you know keeps your car looking great. Definitely. And a lot of people ask, like, do I need to put a wax on my car? Do I need to coat it? And like Nick is saying, if you do those things, it's going to make your wash process so much easier that you won't even mind washing it every day, really. Because, exactly. Like, you'll, one, you see what we put on this vehicle. A lot of times you just need to rinse it off real quick because of how well protected it is. Exactly. So the more layers that are on your vehicle, the more it's going to be, or the better it's going to look, but obviously the easier it's going to be to wash. So that all goes in line with, you know, the protection stage as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys, uh, let's let's throw some more questions in the comments. How, how we doing so far? Let us know how we're doing. How's the noob doing? What do you think? Does he, from a scale of one to 10, is he like really doesn't know anything or is he doing great? Could let us know that and in the meantime so for vehicles that have plastic bumpers and trim pieces that are exposed to constant elements harsh uv rays water spots people want to know what's the best way to clean it and protect it yeah they want to know that they want to know that <laughs> do they yeah <laughs> oh. i'm asking you oh you're asking me i'm still kind of a newbie too so i mean the best way to to you're talking about trims and stuff we'll say like fender flares bumpers uh things that are textured plastic and rubber i mean all of those things you want to put a dressing on um we have various types like a water-based dressing and oil-based dressings you saw that if you watched the live yesterday you saw that joey uh chose to go with our vrp which is a water-based uh dressing all of them protect from uv rays and yeah. cracking and things like that and that's great for your interior and exterior exactly and then we have the oil base which is we recommend just for the exterior. Right. Um, and Henry was doing that with Blue Guard yesterday, and you can see the deep shine on that one. It lasts a, a little bit longer, I feel like, um, in terms of the depth of it. But, you know, they, they each have their pros and cons. Exactly. So, say you have a Jeep or something that has a lot of plastic trim pieces, and oil base is a great way to go to maintain that deep, lustrous gloss while also repelling out like a harsh UV rays or things that could stain it or just color it over time. Exactly. So, it's just a great way to keep your car looking brand new or its best by uh, adding a dressing, yeah. which is also a protectant at the same time. And some people don't even necessarily like the crazy shine that those give exactly, off, which yeah. is why those water-based dressings are For more of a natural way. look or that OEM finish, but it's exactly. also gonna be dry to the touch. It's not gonna collect dust, it's not gonna fling out the surface, won't run off. Yeah, so Nick, let's uh, kind of give an overview of what we're about to head into now. Like, right. What, what's the next process in, in so this? So now that we've washed the vehicle, I see that you did the wheels first, which is great, excellent uh, procedure there. You dried it. And now we need to move on to the inspection of the vehicle. I'm sure it has a lot of scratches and swirls just by listening in from the wings of what's been going on in this it's, vehicle. It's pretty scratched up, yeah. So we'll, we'll take a look at the paintwork, but I'm sure it's going to need to be clayed, which is the process of extracting contamination from the pores of the paint. And then from there, we're going to go on to the really fun part, which is polishing. And by definition, what that means is you're going to rub the surface to make it smooth and shiny. And that's what we're going to do to bring out the deep, lustrous gloss of this BMW. It's a black finish, and that shows a lot of scratches and swirls. So we want to make sure that we get that looking its best. Yeah. Remove them all. Yeah. How many of you guys uh, have polished before? Give a little, I don't know, what, what's the polishing emoji? Is there, a, is there, a, is there an emoji for polishing? Is there a or? polishing emoji? Let's do the hands up. Like, uh, or just the thumbs up will do. The thumbs up will do as well. <laughs> uh, and if you haven't, you're going to learn today. That's so right. It's way easier than people think. Um, I was definitely afraid to pick that thing up the first time I did it, but with the help of these guys, I mean, you could do pretty much anything. So That's right. it uh, may seem a little daunting or scary at first because you are holding a power tool basically that you've never used yeah. before. But once you actually get the process of it and you start to get your practice and you're honing your skills, it's actually a lot of fun. Absolutely. And you can do a lot of great things with it as yeah, well. It's kind of relaxing in a way, too. Yeah, therapeutic to actually get in there and make a difference on your vehicle that's visual. You know, a car wash looks great, but once you can actually remove imperfections such as scratches, swirls, oxidation, tree step stains, uh, yeah. bird droppings, water spots, all that kind of stuff, it makes a huge difference. Absolutely. So I think they're all set up to go. So we're going to cut back into the detail garage and we're going to look and see what we have next and help you guys out. Let's go.
and we're gonna check it out right over here. So oh, that's like Room Raiders on MTV. Uh, I don't know if you guys can <laughs> if, if we can get someone up here and see this, but basically there are lots of scratches here. So it looks like you were washing it the way that you said you were. Yeah, I thought it had a nice car. <laughs> Uh, but we can take care of this pretty easily. So Nick, um, what's the first step here with, in terms of getting rid of these scratches and swirls? So before we put any kind of machine on there, we need to clean the surface. And mm -hmm. what that's going to do is remove the embedded contaminants that are in the pores of the paint, because even though it's clean after a car wash, it may still feel kind of rough, or there's things on the surface that you can't see, but it gives it that rough feeling. And we need to get those off the surface before we go into the polishing step. So Henry's got two options for us here. Okay. He's got the OG clay bar as well as the clay block. And Henry, you can explain the difference between the two. All right, so the OG clay bar is a traditional clay bar that is going to pick up any contamination that might be seen on the surface of the vehicle. In this occasion, since you're a newbie, yes, we're going to give you a clay block, but I'll also give you the trial with the clay bar. Okay. All right, so the clay bar, there's benefits of it. One, it fits into tighter areas. Two, if you drop it, you have to toss it out. That's, that's not a benefit. But okay. on the other hand, <laughs> that one, if you drop it, you can pick it back up, reuse it. This one has a synthetic clay on one side and mm -hmm. a sponge on the other side. So you could either squeeze it and get into the little areas, but we need to pair our clay bar, clay block with a lubricant. That is why I also have our clay luber. Ah, okay. And we sell these all individually and as kits, so you can get this for noobs. This, the kit is perfect. You get the clay block and the luber at the same time because you do need both. Yeah. And why do we need the luber? So the lubricant is going to help you glide the clay bar across the surface vehicle without causing clay marring, without causing dragging, or you don't want to do any further damage to your paint. So now, how, now that we brought it in, we can see your paint is not in the best condition. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it's not very really close. See scratches and swirls. So we yeah. want to avoid any more scratches and swirls. That's why we're using the clay luber. Okay. So you can start off with you can start off with your clay block. Okay. All you need to do is just spray directly. Be very generous with it. Spray, oh, spray, spray, spray. Anywhere, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. Okay. And now, have you guys ever like taken your finger you and, and rubbed your paint a little bit and it felt a little rough? That's basically what this step is eliminating at this point. Um, that rough feeling is all the contamination, the fallout, uh, just road dirt and grime that's collected on your paint uh, and getting embedded inside of the, the clear coat. Um, so this, the clay block and bar is a sticky substance that will remove that from here safely as long as you're using the lube. It's like silly putty. Yeah. So, so while they're doing that, I'm going to go grab some gloves and Nick and I are going to grab gloves as well to help out because you do, you should probably use gloves when you do this best. process. Yeah, it's but, best. And also, since we are going to be polishing this vehicle, this is an important step, but even if you're not going to polish your car, you still want to do this before you apply any kind of ceramic or your glaze sealant wax combination. Mm -hmm. That'll promote a better bond and also you're not locking in any kind of, kind of you know, grime underneath the layers. So that's why it's important to do this step after you wash the vehicle because again, you're inspecting it and now you can see all the filth that's left behind even after a wash and now we can go on the true step and get the car looking its best. Yes. Nice. All right, so, so All you're right. going to be working with me. They're going to be getting the rest the of the back. car. All We're right. going to be working on the hood. The hood. So yep. get your clay luber. I saw you already sprayed yep. it everywhere. I spray, so yeah. You'll see. I spray it on the area. Yep. Now you'll spray your clay block. I'll spray my clay bar. Does it matter which side? Yeah, the, the, that the, side. The, the clay side. The clay side. So make sure it's lubricated. Now you okay. go to the area you're working on and just go side to side. Side to side? Yes, but make sure you have lubricant. So if you want to carry your clay luber on one hand. Oh, OK and just spray over your hand, at all times, you will have lubricant over it. it smells so like, like bubble gum, right? Bubble gum, but like, yeah. So it smells like Christmassy though. <laughs> so just spray, and all of this is just pulling off any contamination. And after you give it a couple passes, inspect your clay block. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if you see a little bit of contamination, this is why I put a towel right here. You go to your area, your towel, okay. you cleaned it, now you can continue. Okay, nice. Versus me, whenever I'm using a clay bar, I will have to knead out my patty, Square flip parts. it, remold it, and remold continue. It. Okay. So that's why a clay block, if you're barely getting into detailing, it's yeah. a little bit easier because you don't have to remember about re-kneading your, your clay bar and continuing. So that's why it's the OG one because the OG, so we actually have different types of grades of oh, clay bars. So got the you. OG is just original. Oh, that was original? Medium. Yeah. So we I have a you. blue one that's light, light contamination. It's very light. Mm -hmm. If we have more heavy contamination, then we have the medium duty. And then if you have super heavy contamination, we yep. have a black one, which is a, a black clay bar. Nice. Okay. Right, so just spray and yep. glide side to side. I want to say sticky, I guess. And as you're removing the contaminants, it should feel very smooth. It should start smooth, uh, going back and forth like glass. 
Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it like it's smooth, like right? It's like smooth. You want to make sure that every once in a while as you're doing this to kind of look at your clay bar. All right. And block. And I, you guys can see this. I don't know. We got a camera on here. <laughs> that guy is so bad. Look how dirty <laughs> that is. That's all the contamination and gunk that's so, stuck inside so the snug. paint. What so happens? once you see that kind of stuff, you want to basically fold this into a new patty and start over. And that way, all that gunk and contamination will go back inside here and you can continue. Go ahead, Henry. All right, so, so we, we just got a question. What happens if you drop your clay block? The right. cool thing about the clay block is you pick it back up, you spray some clay lube on it. Oop. It's all right, we'll pick it back up. All right. Spray some clay lube on your face. I'll wipe it there. Yep. And now you can continue. Versus if you drop a clay bar, this is just like gum. Uh, so if yeah. I drop it, it's gonna pick up everything. You would have to toss this piece. Toss out. it out. Okay. Yeah. Makes but versus sense. the clay block, reuse it around the whole entire vehicle. Just make sure to wipe it. Nice. All right. So Snug, like I think we got the whole hood done already. So I'm wiping it all down. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're wiping, always wipe in one direction. Wiping in one direction, you're avoiding scratching swirls. If you have any contamination, still dirt mm -hmm. on it, it won't scratch. So I'll put this towel off to the side. I'm gonna hold the towel. I'll get another clean one, and I'll just buff off any residue. All right, so Snook, feel your paint, and now it feels smooth as glass, right? It feels like yeah, there's nothing on yeah. it. Yeah, can't there's see all the scratches. scratches. Yeah, <laughs> you can still see the scratches, but that's going as much. to be our next step. So, our clay bar and clay block mm -hmm. removed all the contamination. Don't worry, Snook, we'll get all I this get after. You. No, I don't. So just buff it right off. So it's pretty easy. It's very easy to spray. Go to side to side, Spraying and white. you're good to go. So, in mm -hmm. the meantime, if you guys have any questions, drop them down below. What, what do you guys use personally? A clay bar, clay block, both? I don't use any until now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you learned something new today. <laughs> Jason, how are we looking over there? We're looking pretty good on this side. The yeah? dirt is definitely coming off onto the clay bar. A you lot of contamination. There's a lot of contamination and fallout on here. It's basically looking brown. So, um, you can use this pretty good. One question a lot of people had was how much clay could you use or like do you need to use like how often can you refold uh, the dirt into your clay? I recommend refolding it like every two passes just always inspect because of contamination you might drag onto your paint you want to avoid scratching this rolls you want to avoid clay marring mm -hmm. but a quick question for you from our viewers is how often should I clay bar my ride so it all depends how much you drive if you keep your car garage and it doesn't get that much contamination you might want to clay bar it every six months on the other hand I drive my truck every single day. I love driving it. It gets industrial fallout. So I, I tend to clay bar my truck every month or two, just like I'll keep up with it. And over time, it doesn't build up all this contamination. And then I'm stuck with a super contaminated truck. Right. And you throw that away when you're done, correct? The, that sticky thing? Pardon me? You throw that away when you're done. No. So I didn't drop it. I could reuse it. For, for like another month? For, for another oh, okay. time. Okay. But whenever your, your clay bar does not clean up as well anymore, toss it out, get another piece, and you're good to go. But another question from our viewers is, can clay bar remove bugs from the bumper of the car? And the answer is, we want to make it very simple for you guys. We do offer a product called Bug and Tar Remover. You could dilute it into your wash bucket. You could dilute it into a sprayer bottle, spray it, and like that. While you wash, you remove the bugs. But if the mm -hmm. bugs are super deep, the clay bar will also help you remove the bugs from the paint. That's good, especially and if you live in the Midwest. Fun I was just fact there. For you. Fun fact, a lot of the clay bar, clay block can also be on your headlights, can be on your wheels, your glass. It's like this. If you have any stubborn contamination on your glass and it's very hard to see, clay bar it, clay bar. use a glass cleaner, and the glass cleaning is going to be 10 times easier. Okay, so you gotta use a glass cleaner for, if you're gonna use that. No, so you, you, you'll you wash it. You use it after. Clay bar. Oh, after. See? Then yes. I got you. So clay you use bar, it now, then, yeah. how, about, and, how about chrome, Henry? Can you clay you bar chrome? You could also clay chrome. So like this, your car is always, decontaminated, mm -hmm. and a decontaminated car doesn't cause drag on it. Right. So just imagine you never wash your face, mm -hmm. but the day you wash it, yeah. it's going to look 10 times better. So it, it does. cleans out the pores, <laughs> removes everything, and now your paint is smooth as glass. And mm -hmm. our next step is going to be polishing. Okay. So you never want to polish yeah. before you clay bar. Because okay. if you do polish before you clay bar, just imagine you'll be pushing all that contamination deep into the paint, and you're gonna be ending up with more scratches and swirls yeah. than actually Correction. I don't need any more of those. <laughs> We're going to remove them right now. We're going to show you how to remove them. Oh, it's like a facelift. Yes. So I'll be switching over. I'll, sw I'll be switching spots with Nick. Mm -hmm. And then Nick will help you polish your car. And I'll oh, stay nice. back here. So it looks like you got the uh, 
handle of working with a clay bar, but now we're going to go over this process of removing those scratches and swirls that we've seen here earlier. So you mentioned that this car goes to a car wash, you use a brush on it. Yeah. And this is what's really the aftermath of using a brush on your car. You see all those scratches and... I, I didn't realize how bad it was. It really shows, like, and it's really apparent on the darker color vehicles. So I'll just drive at night and no one will <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could put a lot of layers of wax on it. <laughs> but today we're going to remove it, and we're using one of my favorite products, and that's okay. V36. This is a cutting polish, so mm -hmm. it can be used as a one-step, which is what we're going to use it as today. Yep. I've already done a small test spot on the back of the vehicle, and this is perfect for what we're working with. But let's say you have deeper scratches and swirls, or you have really bad paint. That's why we have an entire V-line of compounds and polishes. Okay. Or let's say you're strapped for time. We also have one-step products such as C4 and P4. That's a one-step compound and one-step polish. So you get your nice. car looking its best because... Not all vehicles are the same, which means you know you have different needs, and that's why we have such a variety of different kinds of polishes. And Perfect. So we have yeah. two machines here, and since you're new to polishing, I'm going to assume that you've never had a, a polisher or held a polisher on a vehicle. I have not. No. Okay. Not, not like one of those diesel ones. Some my diesel? polisher is these guns right that's here. Guns. That's, that's, that's what these by are. Hand. Old school. I like <laughs> it can go by hand. We do offer uh, the same pads uh, as this a hand pad. Even V36 can be used by hand if you don't have access to a polisher. But okay today and also to get the best results we're going to use a machine polisher. So behind you we have our Torque X. Oh nice. This is a perfect machine for your starter or your first machine to hone your skills. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you guys are afraid to use a polisher on your vehicle and you can pick that up. It's a dual action polisher which means that it oscillates in two different directions meaning that it's not going to just spin in one direction it also circles around that same uh, pattern nice. and this is going to disperse heat. So as you're polishing you're not creating a hot spot which could potentially burn the paint which is what a lot of people are worried about when they're mm -hmm. using a machine polisher. But what this is great for is it's going to remove any scratches and swirls, water spots, but you can also use this to apply any kind of glaze, seal, or wax. Like nice. I mentioned, we're going to be using our V36. I'm just going to show you real quickly a small spot mm -hmm. of how to use it. I'll be using the Torque 15DA, and this is also a dual action polisher, but this has a larger throw. So your machine has an 8 millimeter throw. This gives you more control. You can also switch that backing plate between a 3, 4, 5, and a 6 inch backing plate. Same thing with the Torque 15. Well, this is rather a 5 and a 6 inch backing plate. Okay. Do you have any idea what he's talking about right now? No. It's exactly. Kinda... <laughs> <laughs> so, what, do you have any questions like what what are what is a backing plate? What is you know anything like that? I kind of understand what it is, but I wouldn't use it or know it on my car. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, the backing plate is what's holding the the pad right now. It's this yellow thing, and his is red. Correct. Yeah, and they're, they're, they come in different sizes. Yeah, so a lot as of well. people refer to that as the backing plate. Uh, a lot of people also call it the head, but this is basically what the pad size is. That's what dictates what you know. Oh, the pad size. Yeah. So it's pretty okay. So it's important to get the right pad size with the right thing. Exactly. So we're also going to be using some pad conditioner. This is going to help moisten the pad. This saves your foam pad and also helps to lubricate the okay. compounds so that it properly breaks down. So how many squirts are you supposed to do? You, you did like six? Five or six. Five would or be six. Great. Okay. Yeah. And you want to do about the size of one hex. So one hex. Okay. V36 as well. We've already shaken the product, which is important, so you mix the whole solution together. All right, just a little squeeze. Got it. All right, I like this. <laughs> there you go. Let's give you some conditioner. All right, and we and put conditioner on it. Yeah, just a couple sprays. That's going to help moisten that pad. Uh, so just we're not two creating. is fine. You're good right there. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to saturate the pad. <laughs> you don't saturate. Yeah. Okay. So that's definitely a big newbie mistake right there, too, is too much. to oversaturate your pad. You, if you do that, you're just going to smear your product everywhere, and it's not going to uh, be able to really heat runny. up enough yeah. well, that was to my actually fault. do anything. Because so. you guys do a lot of, like the Diablo, you like extra, 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 so I figured it would be the same, but exactly. that's really yeah. not yeah. to do. So because... you definitely want to save your chemicals as much as possible, use as little as possible, except for in the event of Call. playing, yeah. because <laughs> you want you want to lubricate as much as possible for that. For the clay bar, for the polish, a little bit goes a long way, and you'll see okay. how that works right now. All right. So before we get started, uh, a pro tip is always throw the cord over your shoulder. Yep. This way you're not dragging it across the vehicle or it doesn't wrap against the side, which can cause scratches. Yep. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by dabbing this out in a small two foot by two foot section, which is about the width of your shoulders. Okay. And then on the lowest speed setting, which I'll show you how to do in just a second, mm -hmm. we're going to spread this out in the area that we're going to be working on. And then on the highest speed setting, we're going to start breaking this down and working it into the paintwork until it goes completely clear. Okay. So you can start dabbing it out in your section. Yep. And then on your machine, what we're going to do is we're going to place it on the vehicle, and then on the back of the machine, there's a switch right back here. Yes. We're just going to flip that, and then we're going to start spreading that out. Just spread it. That's all you got to do. Yeah. You don't have to apply any pressure. Just okay, no pressure. Light. Yeah. Right. Ooh, it smells good too. Everything's got its own. Everything has scent. a little 
smell. Yeah. So now that you've spread it out, we're going to get ready to start polishing. Okay. And what we're going to do is work back and forth using a cross hatching pattern, covering about 50% of our last pass. But a common question that we get is how much pressure to apply to these machines. So yeah. you can feel they got a, a pretty good amount of weight to them. Yep. But just apply a little bit more. So the weight of your hand, just a little bit more, little and more. that's going to press down that pad. Okay. And you want to make sure that you're constantly moving, especially when you're working with a rotary. If you guys out there have a rotary polisher, but for a dual action, it's a little easier. It's more forgiving. But just keep working that back and forth until it goes completely clear or as clear as it possibly can. And then we'll take a clean micro towel and start buffing up the exit. Okay, and I still have it on one? We're going to bump it up to the highest speed setting, which is going to be speed setting six. <laughs> All right. is very loud so we had some music playing for you there we had some audio going in and out thanks for being patient with us and now it's time to basically wipe down that polish that we just that section that we just polished on the hood now we got a couple questions Nick like one was uh, how do you control the spinning of the polisher and how you know how much pressure to put mm -hmm. so the way that I have done is just by dictating the sound so once you put it on the machine or you put the machine on the vehicle you hear that it sounds very loud or it's spinning very fast so by using the weight of your hand, that kind of changes the tone a little bit. You felt it, and you also saw it. I put that. way too much pressure when I first started. <laughs> like, way too much. I thought it was more. It's yeah, really it's like you're just, you putting, you're just guiding it more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure that back plate is always spinning, or else it's not really doing its yeah, job absolutely. properly. One little trick you can do is kind of put little marks on uh, the backing plate. Yeah, making those hashtags so that we can actually see you the can pad see if, spinning. If you ever see the oh. marks while it's spinning, you're putting too much pressure on or you're at a funky angle. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's another thing, too. Is if, if it's at an angle, it'll stall the pad, and then you're not actually cutting anymore. It's just basically vibrating against the absolutely. surface and not removing any of those scratches and swirls. Yeah. So, but you can definitely see a big difference right off the bat. This like, is insane. Are... This is, like, disgusting. Like... <laughs> This my cop was good so, way. Good way, good way, yeah. My <laughs> cop was so, like, I thought it was decent before. You know, you can't even, like, notice this, all the scratches. Exactly. It looks so. a lot deeper now. That's the thing, too, is the scratches make your car look cloudy because of the way they collect those light rays. Yeah. And now by just removing that in one step, you see that you've got that deep, lustrous shine. But we want to make sure that we protect it, which is why we're going on to the next deck of ceramic. Absolutely. So just for time's sake, we're going to work on this little square panel here. We're not going to do the entire thing. We'll have to do that after. Um, but this piece right here is nice and polished. And we'll get up close and show you the difference. You can, you can easily see the difference between the scratches over here on this side and the nice, clear black <laughs> paint. I mean, this is ridiculous. Like you can, I can see myself in here now. <laughs> so... The next phase is going to be ceramic coating. So you want to now protect all this work that we just did. We just spent an hour doing this, um, washing your car. You don't want to have to do this every single time. So it would be mm -hmm. kind of a lot of work to do this every week, right? Yeah. So the next step is to protect what we just did here so you, you don't get these anymore, right? 
Um, so what is ceramic exactly? I was thinking like my mom does ceramics when she was like older to paint stuff. I don't know what that means. Exactly, right? So <laughs> like, it's de this is definitely not your mama's ceramic. Um, pretty much, are you familiar with what clear coat is? I know what a clear coat is, yes. So for all of you guys that don't know, you have your base paint layer, then you have a layer of clear coat which protects your paint underneath it. Okay. What the ceramic coating does is it basically makes it as a, uh, it becomes like a sacrificial layer on top of your clear coat. Oh. So it's a uh, liquid, or in this case, we have different products. We'll show you uh, our first ever hyper wax, which is you've waxed your car before. Right? Like, yeah. Always. So because if you're new to this mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to use a product like Hydro Charge, which is a liquid mm -hmm. um, or something more advanced, um, we do have right here Hydro Slick. This is a combination ceramic and hyper wax basically so this okay. will go on your car just like a wax would you're, mm -hmm. you're already familiar you're with already that. familiar yeah, yeah. Um, and what this will do is it will bond to your paint and harden it will take some time to cure right nick yeah a couple moments just let it uh sit on the surface about a minute and then we'll yeah. wipe it off but this is super important and for your like your last step to keep all this super nice Absolutely, right so this yeah. is locking yeah. in your shine yeah, walls the... repelling any kind of harsh okay. elements as well as water spots and it also keeps your car looking its best. That's right. So grab a applicator pad from Nick and he'll show you exactly how to use it. That's right. We're going to start shaking up the bottle just like we do with all the chemicals to make Shake sure we get the whole solution ready to go. And then we're going to apply just a couple of dots or we'll apply a few dots to our applicator. Okay. Does this smell like bubble gum too? Uh, I wouldn't recommend smelling this one directly. It no, doesn't smell like bubble gum. Yeah, you definitely, <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want to uh, yeah, smell that. that. And we're just going to do the same process just like we're doing with the pad. We're going to start yep. by dabbing it out. Okay. And then working in linear motions using that same cross hatching pattern, we're just going to start working it into the surface. Okay. And like Jason mentioned, this only takes a moment to start bonding. Okay. Oh, I can feel it. Yep. It's yeah, you can. Smooth, right? Yeah. And now, one important step, if you watch what Nick's doing here, is to keep your pad flat and work in a, like a cross hatching pattern because you don't want to end up with high spots on your paint. Um, so if you you do one pass kind of up and down, and then another pass left and right, and that's that is considered like a cross hatch, yeah. Right, exactly. and a little bit goes a long way also because if you think about it, only that initial layer is what's gonna be bonding to the surface. The rest of it we're gonna wipe off in just a moment. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to put a heavy layer of it right now. We can always build up with additional layers of either ceramic or another combination of glaze, sealant, and wax. But it's not gonna haze up, it's just going to start bonding and then after about 30 seconds, we can just take a clean microfiber towel and start wiping off the excess. Nice. Exactly, so while we're waiting a couple of seconds for that to cure, uh, do you guys have any questions? that you might have now based on just the ceramic portion of this. Throw those down in the comments below and uh, we'll answer those. Do so you I think we're questions? about ready to go. Let's, let's uh, start working. Uh, do I have any questions? Yeah. yeah, I feel like a complete idiot that I don't even know how to wash a car and I'm like <laughs> well, in my this 30s. Is definitely, I would <laughs> consider this uh, intermediate to advanced kind of stuff here, but it's definitely something you can DIY. Uh, I do, do have a question though from being from the East Coast. Yeah. How important is it for me to do these steps if I'm in the winter with salt and everything else That's and the weather question. and everything? I know we were in LA and it's totally different here, but... It's incredibly important, especially since, like you mentioned, you have road salt, you have mm -hmm. harsh winters. What this is doing is it's acting as a sacrificial layer that's protecting your vehicle's clear coat. And which we should have mentioned while we're polishing, clear coat does not regenerate. So once oh. you remove it or if it's damaged permanently, there's no way of you know, it's not going to regrow. The oh, it's like you're enameling your teeth. Exactly. Once you're done, you're exactly. done. Exactly. You have to repaint That's it. That's important. So yeah, by important. putting these kinds of coatings on there, it's locking in your vehicle's natural shine. Okay. And it's also repelling out of harsh elements. Nice. I do have a question from the comments coming in right now. And they want to know, is it safe to do this outside? In direct sunlight, it's not recommended. So we want to make sure that the surface is nice and cool to the touch, which is why we're indoors today. Mm -hmm. The vehicle has had time and it hasn't been sitting out in direct sunlight for very long, so it's not going to be hot. But what, the reason behind that is the, the coating will start to dry prematurely. So by allowing it to cool, this is the best way to let it bond and give it the proper work time before we start wiping it off. Exactly. Same thing with the polishing. It's polishing. best to do it indoors as well so that the polish doesn't dry mm -hmm. and that will cause some kind of marring or it'll dry out the product before it's actually diminished. That's right. Okay. And now another question from the comments, uh, can you put wax on top of that? Absolutely. So your ceramic can be layered with a combination of glaze, sealant, and wax. We recommend doing in that order, your glaze first, your sealant, and then your wax. And this is going to give you more of that natural gloss, but more importantly, it's adding more protection. So back in the East Coast, you have those harsh elements. This is the best way to prevent any kind of road salt stains, water spots, or anything else from building That's up good. the surface and then damaging the paintwork. Exactly. So That's super important. Now. 
Someone wants to know um, how often, back to the polishing stage, how often can you polish? And I think that we kind of just answered a little bit of that where you don't want to do it too often because you have a limited amount of clear coat. Right, you don't yeah. want to really burn through that. So uh, yeah, your polisher as well as your clay bar, it's just a tool. So it's not meant to be used every time you wash your vehicle. It's strictly as needed. So like we're saying, the clear coat, it's not going to regenerate. It's not going to grow back. So exactly. that's use exactly, it the least amount as and possible. And that's exactly why you would want a ceramic to protect that clear coat. Um, because then at that point, if you have any little issues, you can, you're just polishing off ceramic. Yeah, that exactly. Point. That's absorbing all those abrasions, yeah. such as your scratches, your swirls, water spots, bird dropping etchings. Exactly. Now, now than Nick, what do we coat. do with the towel after we're done with the ceramic? So since this is a ceramic, unless you wash it immediately, it's got to be tossed. That's Same right. thing with the applicator. This is going to start to harden. Oh. Exactly. So a ceramic hardens on the surface, and that's what's giving you that layer of protection. So unless you use it right away or you wash it right away, it's got to be tossed out in place. So one and done almost. Pretty much. But unless I mean, you unless, clean it. Exactly. Unless you're going to clean it right mm -hmm. away, it's got to be getting rid of it. Okay. Yeah, most times it's better safe than sorry to, if you're yeah. applying a ceramic to just get some new towels. Right. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of ceramics, we also have, well, do we already go over hydro charge? Hydro charge? Um, we have, so we have other ceramics. That, this is how easy it is to apply a ceramic, but we do have other products that are similar. Um, hydro charge is a liquid based. Um, we could throw, throw a little bit of that on screen potentially and um, show you what that does. But the application process on that is very similar to this. It's just a liquid form instead of a wax. Um, the difference between these two is that the hydro charge can only be used on your paint, which is what we just did. Okay. Um, the hydro slick, which we just used, can be applied on your paint, it can be applied on your wheels, it can be applied on your glass. Uh, your headlights. So there's a lot of other areas that you can use hydro slick. So a lot of times what we end up doing is we use hydro charge on our paint and then we'll use hydro charge, uh, hydro slick on the other parts of our car. Now, we do have another question coming in from the chat. So someone wants to know about carbon force. Now, carbon force is our professional grade uh, ceramic. It comes in a little glass bottle um, and you really only need a little tiny bit of that. One, that one, uh, is it a two ounce bottle? I believe it's a two ounce bottle. Two and that ounce can coat bottle. several vehicles as long as it's supply You can do, I think, up to three vehicles with that, that bottle. And that will cure and potentially last for up to five years. Um, and that Damn. one, if you mess that one up a little bit, you will have to polish it <laughs> out. So that one's more important to make sure that you get this, uh, this right the first time. Which brings up another point of longevity. This will last about a year, 12 months on the surface, while Carbon Forest lasts up, up to five years exactly. with the proper application. Oh, that's great. Even so, in the California sun? Even in the California sun. Oh, that's <laughs> It gives clutch. you amazing protection. That's really good because yeah. that sun it's kills really people's cars. And anyone can do it as well. You know, it's just really being mm -hmm. careful with that product, whereas you, there's a little bit more leeway. We recommend this Hydro line for anyone. Anyone can do this. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, the newbie is doing it. Right now. It's very easy to use, user friendly. That's the whole idea behind the hydro line. And going in line with the ceramic protection, we're going to move on to the glass, yeah. which is why we have our hydro view. This is a glass coating as well as a glass cleaner. So, this is the best way to oh, okay. enhance your clarity while also adding water protection, a water beading as well. And yeah. it's in the same way you'd use any kind of glass cleaner. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to start by cleaning your windshield here. Even after you've washed the vehicle, there's always that last bit of runoff or dust. Or it does, like, yeah. Exactly. There's always some light messes. So just a few sprays. So okay. as Nick is doing this, um, we're basically going to explain a little bit more. We have pretty much the hydro line that we have is cool will cover essentially your whole car. What pieces do you think we've missed? So we've got hydro view, which is going to cover our glass. It's essentially a glass cleaner and a ceramic in one. Uh, and that is for your glass. We also have some interior hydro products like Hydro Interior, which is great for what, Nick? Hydro Interior can protect virtually all of your interior surfaces against harsh UV rays, stains Ooh. and spills and messes, like your dashboard, your center console, where you get a lot of traffic in there. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the best way to protect it. And they also have Hydro Thread, which protects your fabric surfaces, right. your carpet, your floor mats, all that kind of stuff is you know, constantly abused by your feet and shoes, which give it a lot of uh, messes from outdoors. So this is yeah, going to be the best way to protect exactly. it against staining. and also keeps those fibers nice and soft. And nice. now once you're done completely doing this whole vehicle, we also have a quick detail spray, which is called Hydro Speed. And that will maintain what we've done here today. It's a quick boost of ceramic. So uh, whether you have a ceramic coating or not, you can still use this product. Exactly. Uh, you'll yeah. get a little bit of ceramic protection from it just standalone. But if you already have what we did here, if you've already hydro slicked your car, 
uh, it'll just boost it even further and, and replenish kind of what was missing after as time goes on. Right, um, and then full circle back to hydro suds. You know, you right. can always use that to boost and maintain exactly. your shrimp coatings, even okay. if you don't have coatings on the vehicle. Exactly, so it's we're gonna start way. wrapping it up here. Um, maybe we can get a little shot of the, the car here. And you've you've kind of graduated here, newbie. So we're giving you you're, oh, you're one of us now. Oh yeah, you're, there we go. You're a full fledged detailer. There you go. You've gone. I don't from... even know how to. Work. Yeah, look at this. Exactly. I'm taking you guys' jobs. That's it. <laughs> or oh, I'm <laughs> opening one on the East Coast. <laughs> oh, perfect. There you go. Is that a so small? <laughs> you've gone from washing oh. wheels, yep. washing the car. You learned how to dry the car. You learned how to clay bar the car and remove contamination from your paint. You learned how to ceramic. polish the ceramic. car as well, yeah. and then ceramic coat your paint and protect everything. Yeah, inside, all in one hour. That's like so, nothing. So, I mean, you guys can totally do this at home if you haven't done this before. It's super easy. You can check out the rest of our YouTube channel. There's mm -hmm. tons of how tos, and we release them every three days, essentially yeah. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our Instagram. We're almost at a million followers, guys. We only Woo! have like a couple thousand to go. So definitely, definitely follow us on Instagram. We can hit that million. Have a crazy huge giveaway. <laughs> All right. And uh, Hi, Jen. Jen's going to come here and wrap it up so for us. So I was sitting back there and I want to see the results. Let's oh. pull up some tape and look at this before and after. Let's check it out. Um, before we close out, because I think everybody was pretty excited. Absolutely. So There's a lot of tape. There's a lot of <laughs> tape, so I'm going to start over here. And Kind of right so again, we only did that front section. Uh, as you guys know, polishing is going to take a while. Ceramic, but we want to show you some of that before and after. And now Snook has what he has, the tools to be able to polish his car. Look at but if that. you look at this close up, you it's can crazy. see. You can see all the scratches and <laughs> swirls on this side that were there before. And that's after washing it. This side is like just pure black, like reflective and protected. It looks amazing. I'm honestly buying this stuff for Christmas. This is like insane. <laughs> like I didn't realize the difference until now. Absolutely. Like now I thought know. I was doing a good job, but like it, I'm embarrassed. I feel like an idiot. Like I don't even want to take my car out anymore <laughs> until I wash it and do all this exactly. other stuff. And I mean, this is this is kind of amazing, especially you know we're live, so th this is it. This is the results from this. Now you it's... would want to further hone and refine this as well. So we're gonna go back to the front of the car here and. As we close out, we're gonna take care of this off camera and basically do the entire car with Snook and make sure his entire ride is shining Woo. beautiful. Uh, we do have some bonuses for you guys. Do you yeah, so before that, we close out, I know you guys had a lot of questions about the freebie. So we have, for you tuning in, and those of you that tuned in yesterday got a, an opportunity, we're giving you a free blueberry snow foam, which is our limited edition snow foam. All you have to do is go to the link that we are showing. It's also gonna be in the comments below put in your email address and you'll get that free snow foam on your next purchase on the website. So nobody has this product yet. Nobody That's can right. get it. It's not launching for a couple days. So yeah, pick that up, click below. Click below right here. We are so happy that you were here with us for two days. Snook, thank you. Of course. So now no, he has a tip. We have all of your questions. We apologize we couldn't get to all of them. There was tons of questions that we were looking at, but we are going to use that. We're going to create a lot more content for you guys. Absolutely. Maybe some Q and A's. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, Make sure if you're watching from YouTube, go to our Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. We, are, we were live on all platforms, so we were looking yep. at your comments on all of them. Um, do yeah. you guys have gift cards for Christmas and stuff? You know, check with your local stores. They do okay, have gift nice, cards. Nice. Uh, or just buy a great gift, right? Or buy a gift. Well. Yeah, give it yeah, to them yeah. already. Get, you know? that. get them the best detailing yeah. kit. You know, we, we sell kits as well, so you could get perfect. Thank you, guys. Like we hope Take you care. guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.